G'day folks. Well, I've uh, started stripping down the power unit motor off this one here. Uh, this is mainly what I want to keep along with the rotor. I'm going to have to carefully cut the laminations off. Probably about five minutes with a nine inch grinder. Pretty easy to split the rotor lengthways and should be able to get away with one split to relieve any tension and it'll just pop apart and you can drive the shaft out. But all I want is the shaft, the main front bearing and the housing. Now there's no retainer plate for these bearings, it's just shouldered up against the shaft and pushed hard into the housing so I'm going to have to make a, uh, a retainer of some sort, like probably a whole plate to cover this, the front of this housing up, just make it look nice and neat and keep any water out, even with a uh, lip seal on it or something, a V seal, and that should do it. I could even add a, um, if I make it out of half inch thick aluminum plate, uh, I could even have another self-aligning bearing just to help give it a bit of extra support, double bearing it. That way I can just drive it straight off with the um, Yanmar diesel and it'll go, go pretty well from there. It's either that or um, centre a self-aligning bearing on there instead of this one and uh, allow that to take up any excess or any misalignment between the engine and the power unit because that's going to be a big issue. Apart from that it shouldn't be too bad. Okay well it took a little longer than expected but that was only because there's um, aluminum through the laminations I had to keep oiling it and just making it easier to cut the alley out but went through there pretty well. Split it down to pretty much where that key slot is and uh, a little bit of a um, gouge in the shaft, but that's alright, I'm going to turn that smooth anyway. The bearings are already pretty rough, so I'll use this one for the time being and re-grease it, like wash it and re-grease it. But ultimately I'm going to need another, um, another main bearing. So it'll do for now, for the purpose of mock-up and test run even. Yeah, it's a decent bit of shaft, <laughs> should work quite well. I'm trying to keep the whole profile as compact as possible. I did think about using that other end bell, turn this shoulder a bit longer or turn it back here and uh, use that other end housing, but I don't know. I'll try and keep it as compact as possible. That's why I didn't go with the generator idea to making it too big. So there we go. Next step, I think I'm going to clean this up. Um, shouldn't have to remove that bearing at this point. The main reason I didn't remove them earlier is because they are well pressed on there. If I do have to remove it, it'll end up in its, with its result in its destruction, so I'd have to buy a new bearing, but not sure yet. That remains of the other one. I just cut through it till it's split. Job done. Okay, so as you can see, we've progressed a little bit more. I've cut the shaft in half after turning most of it down between centers I'm basically just going to turn most of that the remaining splined bit off and just have that as my drive coupling that'll be the output or sorry the um, end bell and bearing retainer there'll be a retention plate and then there'll be the coupling so it'll be fairly stout there'll be a little bit of play you'll be able to see the shaft turning but that's about it and this is what I'm going to be using as my main coupling I have to drive this from the crankshaft end of the uh, engine so I can't use the existing uh, PTO flex coupling shaft. So I'm going to modify, I think this one here will end up on the pump end, this will end up on the flywheel end. And I have to replace all these rubber discs but that's about it. The rubber discs shouldn't be a problem. If anything, I'll uh, get some soft plastic material and replace them with some hard plastic sleeves, something like that. Don't know. There's already a flex coupling on the unit, so I'm guessing uh, polyethylene or polypropylene sleeves won't hurt it at all, given that it's now got two flexible couplings between the hydraulic pump and the engine. So, yeah, it's all good. I just centre drilled it. Cut, obviously cut the shaft in half with the 9 inch and uh, I'm going to start turning it down and see how we go <laughs> there's not a lot of uh, 
grip on the chuck so it's as concentric as I can get it without taking it to work and using one of the machines on Monday or whenever I get the time, probably next week or something. But knowing, not, knowing what I'm like at work, by the time you're done for the day you want to get home rather than hang around and do other things. So we'll do it all at home, apart from key slotting. I will take it to work and key slot it during my, my lunch break or something because uh, we're going to need a uh, shaft key, that's for sure. Alright, let's start turning some material off. Uh, there's a bit of oil on the uh, shaft from when I was cutting it previously, so as I started this I noticed a bit of smoke, so <laughs> this should be pretty interesting. Okay, well, after about an hour or so of uh, machining and fiddling around, I can now fit coupling to the shaft, which is perfect. That'll tap on quite nicely after I mill a key slot in it. I'm going to have to do that one at work, but at least all the machining's done. It's just taken quite a while, which is normal for such a small lathe. You can only take tiny cuts. I really need to get the turret lathe tooled up so I can take some uh, bigger cuts and a decent motor on it too but anyway the old 1942 South Bend 9 inch does a very good job made in South Bend Indiana USA 1942 it's a good machine albeit worn it's still good but no problem with what I've done today <laughs> Alright, well that's what we're looking at. Either side of this flange will fit, they're both 35mm bore. Uh, given the degradation and age of the thing, I wasn't expecting it to be metric, but it, it is actually metric. So, yeah, 35mm shaft. I've got a key slot at 8mm. And, uh, yeah, it should work quite well. I just have to make up a retainer, like drill and tap these points here. One, two and three and make a semi countersunk type retainer or at least make it with a spigot on it that can push the bearing hard against the uh, wave washer that way the shaft is at its optimal position and so is this the drive coupling so yeah there's a bit of fine fitting involved but it will work quite well and that will bolt straight onto there and it'll work. Hmm. Just looking at the shaft the way it is now, I could even take it back a lot further. I'll probably take it back to about here. Bring that coupling right in close, I think. Dunno. I've got to take it to work to do some uh, all the key slot and all that sort of thing, so. I don't know, if I've got time I might 
rip it back a bit further and just cut off the rest of the shaft. It would be nice because we're going to have the other side of the coupling here in the engine so there's a lot of space between the two of them. Nowhere near as bad as if I had the uh, electric motor in place because that would be back here. So yeah it's not too bad. It'll definitely work. But I'd like to keep it as compact as possible since it's uh, axially driven this bearing race is a bit scuffed up from moving in the housing anyway so I'm gonna have to uh, get a bit of the green Loctite bearing mount compound retaining compound that or uh, try and drill and tap into probably that surface there and just put a little grub screw in there so that the outer race doesn't spin in the housing Although more than likely, I think the best option would just be some soft bearing mount, something that I can just heat the housing and release it again when I want to pull it apart. The, the bearing itself's cleaned up; it's 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 good to go. I don't have to replace it, but that's what we got to play with. It should work quite well, actually. Thanks for watching.